Hello, and welcome to this next episode of Gur Codes, episode number three. In this episode, I will be talking about the Xamarin Forms dependency service. Um, so basically, in the past episode, we've talked about the custom renderers, uh, so how platform renderers can be overridden to have uh, some kind of custom look for your controls or replace the controls altogether or whatever you can just add some custom magic to it and override the default uh, behavior that the Xamarin guys have implemented for us and basically the dependency service is more or less the same thing um, only this focuses on platform specific functionality so because you when you use Xamarin forms um, you will only have the functionality available to you which is implemented by Xamarin by their wrapper libraries and that kind of stuff um, but sometimes you might want to access the platform specific code um, so for instance you want to implement something like touch ID or um, split windows for Android and you're going to have to implement some platform specific code for that um, but you're in Xamarin form so you want to have uh, the majority of your code in the shared library um, the dependency service is something that can help you with that um, it acts as a dependency injection system so basically what you're going to do is define an interface in the shared code and an implementation in the platform specific project. So let's have a look at how that works. I've already set up the project uh, for you because you probably don't want to see me create a new project every single time. Um, and as we are used to by now, this is the platform, uh, I'm sorry, this is the shared library, so my PCL. And here's where we will define an interface. Um, so I'd like to do that in a separate folder as well. Interfaces, add new empty interface. And let's have a look at uh, some device orientation. So I device orientation. and we will just get the device orientation from it so so um, actually we're going to need uh, anum for this as well um, let's just create it in a new file empty enumeration which we will call device orientation and it will be either landscape or portrait okay now we can use these from our shared code and here we are then going to return a device orientation and just call this get orientation okay so this is the interface that we are going to use to get to our functionality but of course it's an interface so it doesn't do anything by itself and we now need to implement the platform specific code so first let's go over to iOS and add a new folder implementations or whatever you want to call it and we will add a new class here which will be the device orientation implementation and we'll just let this inherit from i device orientation which is in our shared library so it probably needs to add the using here and we don't need this but we have to implement the method that we have declared earlier so here we go and here we can say okay um, actually let me paste in some prefabricated code because you don't want to see me type um, here you go it's already complaining with the red squigglies um, oh, I named this differently actually 
So here you see all of a sudden there is some platform specific names coming in, the UI application which is a typical iOS namespace and here we are going to determine whether it's portrait or landscape and what we do is we return the item that we have just declared ourselves. So with this we can uh, run some platform specific code but still get back to our shared code uh, rather fast and do the rest of the functionality there. Um, and if we go to the implementation for Android, add new folder, um, what did I call it, implementations, add new file, device orientation, implementation, and let's get some code in here as well. Oops. First we need to device orientation, get the interface in here, and the method that we need to implement. And here we are going to do the same thing, but in Android the code looks very different, although it does the same thing. Whoops, what am I doing here? Here we have to use a iWindow manager suddenly, which is a Android thing, and again naming is different here. And the content context. Okay. So here is the same code but then for Android, which will eventually give us the same result because we will still get uh, whether we the device is in landscape or portrait. Um, but the implementation is very different from the iOS one. So if we want to get to this code, then we need to call it from the shared code, of course, because we are running the app from our PCL. Um, so let's have a look at our page here. And I'm going to just take a shortcut and not do any bindings or that kind of stuff. I'm just going to give this control a name, orientation, label, and text doesn't really matter then. And then from our code behind, um, let's set our orientation label text to, and here comes the magic, the dependency service, dot get and we want to get the code from our device orientation uh, device orientation or rather that's the interface we that we have declared uh, which needs to get implemented at its runtime uh, to get the functionality we want so now it knows whoops so now it knows uh, what methods are uh, we can access and here we can say get orientation and let's make it to string so we can put it in the label. There's some indentation going on here. There we go. So now the orientation label text, so our label would represent the current orientation of our device. Um, actually, I forgot one thing, uh, which is similar to working with custom renderers. We need to register our dependency service um, the same way as we did with the custom renderers. So we need to adorn this namespace with this attribute. Only this time not export renderer, but we are going to register this as a dependency. And we are going to use this only this class name we have here and because it implements this interface uh, it will register it for that interface automatically so we just have to add the using here and we have to do the same thing for Android which is here we just need a different using and now we should be all set so if I run this code then the simulator should come up and 
provide us with the right orientation in our label. Uh, actually, while this is going to boot up, uh, let me talk a little bit more on this line. Um, of course, if you forgot to register your interface or your implementation or that kind of stuff, uh, it can happen that this get will return null. So you should always check on null for this line before you proceed uh, to prevent any uh, errors there. Okay, so now it's portrait. I don't think if I change it now it will change accordingly. Uh, but if we boot it up when it's on landscape, it should represent the change. No, because it still turns from portrait first. <laughs> okay, but well, you get the point. Maybe it's a nice exercise for you at home. Try to get this to work to uh, update as it should. Uh, also, again, still my Android uh, simulator emulator still isn't working, so I can't show you on Android. Um, but believe me, it works. And, well, as you can imagine, this can come in pretty handy uh, for platform-specific stuff. Um, so, stuff that the uh, awesome dudes at Xamarin didn't implement, like these orientation, or uh, checking on battery status, or uh, picking stuff from your photo library or that kind of stuff and also if you're going to work with uh, files uh, the paths are of course completely different on both file systems so if you need to access some kind of path you also need to uh, work with this dependency service to get the right path in your uh, shared library so but also um, if you want to access um, very platform specific features like Touch ID which is specifically for iOS uh, you're going to have to implement it this way and even more so you're going to have to uh, run the code just for iOS so that's uh, what I have for you in this episode I hope you've learned something from it um, if you have any questions please let me know my Twitter should be coming up right here I will edit it in now, and please subscribe to my channel, and until next time.